Hello, Blenderheads. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, nice that you're here for my talk. I shouldn't shout so loud, huh? It's too loud. Nice that you're here for my talk for mapping live open air operas. My name is Clemens Rudolf, aka, AKA Antri Lope. I do uh, 3D art, I do videos, I do mapping, animation, interactive art, all this stuff, VR, AR, all stuff you can do with Blender and with your computer. Um, I'm located in Regensburg, it's a city in the southeast of Germany. I'm a freelancer and autodidact. I'm a Blender user since I think 2.3. I checked to find it out, I checked all the splash screens and like, ah, I think this I remember. Um, and I'm a Blender supporter since Elephant Stream, so I supported all open movies. I have the small rocket from the Blender Sprint, I think it was called. Uh, I'm a Blender Cloud supporter and Blender Development Fund member. Here I wanted to talk about mapping. Uh, mapping, like in general, you can say you have a projector and you put it somewhere on a facade, on a building, on an object, on a car, everywhere. Um, this is a slide of one of my projects. Um, these are stills. They are part of animations. They normally take from five to eight minutes, ten minutes. Some are shown just for one night. Some are shown for three, for four weeks. Every night, it always changes. Why do I do, I do like mapping? Uh, the one thing is I like audience. Like if you make a video and just do it for a screen, people watch it at home. Uh, perhaps in the cinema, yeah, but you don't get the reactions from the audience. I like to have the emotions, the reaction from the audience, and this I have. What's going on? Something went wrong with the presentation? Uh, ah, it's back. So um, sometimes I like to watch the people watching my, my shows to get the, the emotions, the reactions. I really like it. The second thing is public space. I like to work in public space. I think we have uh, the public space is much, uh, it's too much used for advertisement and stuff like this and traffic. And so we need more art in public space. So I, that's the reason why I like it. The other thing is I used to be a street performer 20 years ago. I did juggling shows, fire shows, stuff like this. I was touring uh, through Germany and France. And they had also audience and public space. I stopped juggling, but I kept this, and I still like it. The third point is I like big screens. It's really nice if you produce something and you see it very big somewhere in the city. It has some disadvantages. You have to be very careful with speed, like moving things appear totally different on a small screen than if you have 30, 40 meters. And uh, rehearsaling or testing is very complicated because projectors are still very expensive to rent. And so normally I have one day in advance to test my stuff. And I produce the stuff on the screen and then I see it a day before I run the show on a big building and sometimes it can appear different. In 2019, I had the chance uh, normally it should come, uh, to do my first opera. He, uh, it was Tosca. Does anybody know Tosca? Have everyone seen Tosca? One person, so no, not many opera fans here. I wasn't also, it was like the second opera I saw, or I, yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen many operas, so it's, it was totally new to me. It's by Giacomo Puccini, and it's kind of a romantic thriller. So you have love, you have a bad guy, you have police, you have murderer. And the whole show is about two hours. We played it just once in front of 3,000 people. Two years later, I get the second chance, Das Rheingold. It's from Richard Wagner, it's a German guy. And it's more like a fantasy story. 
So you have uh, gods and you have uh, giants, you have magic, you have dwarfs, and of course you have gold because you have dwarfs. Uh, the normal du duration is about two and a half hours, but we played a version just one and a half hours. Uh, we played it once. It was planned a second show, but it was canceled because of a thunderstorm warning. The thing was the thunderstorm never came, uh, but it was too late to do it. Uh, the audience was a little bit smaller, or half, because of COVID restrictions, so we had to keep distance between the people. Um, so it was just half of the audience. It was produced by the Theater Regensburg. It's a, theater, uh, it's a um, theater of the city of Regensburg, so it's paid by the city. They do orchestras, they do ballet, they do theater, and of course, operas. Normally, they play in venues like this, but for the operas, it was something like this. Or it was this, it's the Stadt Lagerhaus, it's a storage room, a storage house. Um, it's not so glamorous, but it's big. It's 70 meters long and 44 meters high. So I had my big screen and I was happy. What you can't really see here is that it's located in a port. So on the left side, you have the audience, and on the right side, the building, and in the middle, you have the water. Uh, the distance between the audience and the house is about 80 meters. And this makes things not very easy. Uh, to get a better overview, so in pink you have the audience area, which is about 90 to 100 meters wide. In the bright green you have the um, audio and video technician tent, where I was located also. In the bottom you have with the green the orchestra tent, because we had a live uh, symphony orchestra playing and they don't want to play outside because of the uh, instruments. They're very expensive. And the blue one is the stage. That stage, it's a little bit overrated. <laughs> uh, it looked like this. So you have train tracks, you have gravel, you have grass, you have uneven surface. Uh, opera singers don't like it very much uh, to play in these conditions, especially if it's in the night and you have light and you're blinded. Um, could be a little bit dangerous. So on the first year, with, uh, the first show with Tosca, they decided to just play on this platform. In the second year, they were a little bit more, uh, they had more uh, courage. Uh, they uh, also had this big inflated sofa, which was also not very easy to walk on. Uh, and in the right corner, you see a camera guy. Because if you're 80 meters away from the audience, you can't really see what the singers are doing. So we had two cameras on the stage side and one big camera on the audience side. And here you see the small guy on the sofa put reprojected on the big house so people could see what happened. We had four projectors, each 30,000, 30,000, 37,000 ANSI lumen. Um, and two projectors were put in a stack. So two projectors produce the same pixel uh, picture. This is done to double the uh, brightness of the picture. So two projectors for the left side of the building, two projectors on the right side of the building. It, it overlaps about 15%, but uh, with, there's a soft edge, so you, it looked like a whole picture. So here you have an impression how it looked like. On the left and right, you see an actor filmed with live camera. Uh, on the whole building, some 3D content, and on the bottom, some stage light. And for a mapping artist, it's not very ideal, because you normally want it very dark and just your projection very bright. And with the stage light, uh, it reflects to the building, so you can't really see. Uh, the live camera picture covers your picture. Uh, so you have to deal, or I had to deal with the situa situations that I'm not the most important thing on the wall. And uh, this was new for me. <laughs> and then you have the cranes in the uh, foreground, which also cover parts of the building. Here's a picture of the technician tent. So we had two audio technicians, one light technician. In the bottom right corner is my desk. 
On the right side from me, there's a video uh, camera operator, so he gives uh, instruction to the camera guys what to film and how. And what was my job now? Like on site, I was playing the videos in my um, mapping software. So I had one guy sitting next to me reading the score from the opera that I know where we are in the opera because uh, I'm not, I can't read notes, musical notes. Um, and I had to, on cues, I had to press button to play it. I instructed the live camera operator what character do we need next and how he should film it, or his camera guys. And I mixed the live camera content with my content all together to one picture. The biggest thing was uh, before, like the planning, creating of all visual content. So I did the concept, the ideas, and I produced it. So it was video recording, editing, color grading, modeling, texturing, lightning, simulating, all this stuff. And where's Blender now? I used it in several stages of this production. One stage is I had a 3D scan of the building, and I did the overall planning and measuring with the 3D scan. I reprojected my image I created on a low-poly model of the building, so I get a better impression how it will look like. I even exported it in VR, or later on with uh, Rheingold, I used the VR scene inspector in Blender to even get a better impression how it will look like. I used it for the planning. This is a, a video sequence editor of Blender. So all color blocks um, represent uh, different content. So you have uh, 3D content, you have live footage, uh, live, yeah, live video footage, pre-produced footage, um, and all this stuff. Like, so I could see, are there gaps, there I need more, like I did the planning with the video editor in Blender. And of course, I created the 3D content in Blender. Here you have an, um, from Rheingold, it's the second act, not the first, it's a mistake. Uh, they live on a mountaintop, and in my version, they don't live in a mountaintop, the gods, they live in kind of containers from the harbor, the trees on and like tiny houses. The, house, uh, the trees were doing, done with a Groove Blender add-on. It's a really nice add-on. I don't know if he's here, the creator, no. Uh, it's a really nice one. Now I give you an impression how it looked like uh, a small video from Tosca. Thank you. <laughs> the video quality was not so good, um, but it's also not very easy to film projection if it's very bright, like with the stage light. Um, photos mostly look better from video mapping if the surrounding is a little bit too bright. 
So I had different categories of content because you have to imagine I had to fill up one and a half hours uh, from the opera. It's a one-man show. Uh, I had to about 10 to 12 weeks time. Uh, and so I, I had to decide where to do what. Uh, I decided to have some scenes where more like a background, like a normal stage design. In Tosca, the acts are placed in very distinct uh, places, like you have a church, you have a palazzo, and you have the rooftop of a building. So this, these places uh, I could design. Um, and I also have kind of stage design with the containers you saw. They're floating around. So I have a little bit of movement, but it's very fast to do and to fill up time. And then I have stuff like I call foreground. It's where my animation or my, my videos are real in the foreground, in the face. Like you, this is the main thing happens on the, on the building. And this was much more complicated uh, to do uh, and needed much more work. The foreground was a mixture between 3D animation and uh, pre-produced video content. And then there was a live camera content on top of all of this. Here is an example of the church I designed for uh, Tosca. Um, it's a static scene, but the light changes. So I could easily fill up some time in the first part of the opera. The light changes uh, on the things what is getting on in, in the opera, like uh, you have a love scene or a romantic scene, then the light is more warm and, and um, yellow, and then you have the bad guy coming, uh, then the light is more cool and blue, and so there were light changes during this part of the opera. Yeah, foreground, what, why, and when. Um, I told you I'm not an opera expert, and opera is a very special, special thing. They have their own language, they have their own, it's a kind of a bubble. Um, and for me, it was not clear in the beginning, when do they need support or pictures from me? When do they need the singers, pictures of the singers? Um, when, wh what is happening? <laughs> because if you hear an opera, you don't understand, first you don't understand anything. So what's the story? And this was a, it took some while to understand um, where to fill stuff. And uh, like in Ventosca thinks this area, um, the theater said she should be visible. But if always the singers are visible in the interesting parts of the opera, I just got the boring stuff or just stage design. And this is not so much fun for me. So I also wanted some parts of the opera which are the interesting parts. <laughs> and um, get an um, like an um, tell in my visual language things what happen in the opera. So uh, in this example, you see a torture scene, uh, and this guy is tortured, and it was, f uh, for me, it was really visible and f uh, feeling of a tortured guy, but I can show you just the still picture. Uh, artistic challenges, yeah, the length of the opera, I told you already, the keeps the same quality above the whole length of one and a half hours. Uh, I couldn't work like just on one part very intense and the rest I forget because it's visible. If you have one perfect part and the rest is crap, you can't do it. Uh, I have to compete with the live camera picture uh, and I have to uh, think in the planning phase already where is live camera picture and where not. I have to compete with the stage light. I have to compete with the blocking stuff or I have to um, think about it. And here comes the spread of the audience um, and I have to take into account. Because if you sit on the very left and the thing in front of the building gives a different visual shadow if you're uh, sitting on the far right. So it blocks for different people, so I couldn't put important parts where uh, the uh, visual was blocked. Uh, and they couldn't tell me before where the cranes are standing exact, so it was a little bit uh, blind flight. And then tempo variations. I uh, had a version, recorded version of the operas, but the conductor doing his own speed every show. So I couldn't have one block of video and just 
press play. Sometimes I had, during one piece of three, four minutes, I had four or five cues because it has to be exact on the note that coming this effect, and this was not so easy. And of course, uh, budget is mostly a problem. It was here also. Um, just fast, some technical challenges. Pro projectors came late, then uh, there was rain after rehearsal, so I couldn't check my pictures after the rehearsal. Next day, kind of same happened. Support was still in operation, so during the rehearsal, a train came. We had to unplug all the cables, let the train through, plug it again. Um, uh, with um, Rheingold, we had no orchestra. It was just a piano version because there was a positive COVID test in the orchestra. Uh, yeah, live stuff can happen always. So I want to show you a short video from Rheingold, and then I'm finished. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I'm here till day after tomorrow. Thank you.